Monkey Man, written and directed by Dev Patel. This is Dev Patel's directorial debut. There was a lot of stuff which went on behind the scenes on this film. It almost didn't get made. And he broke his hand. There's there's all manner of things which happened uh, on the set of this film, which essentially, you know, the end result, when you know that, is kind of a miracle. This film is good. It's not exceptional. And it's also not as good as the trailers make it out to be. But it's still a good film. I did enjoy it. So this is Dev Patel's directorial debut where he also stars. So he's playing a young man trying to right the wrongs of his past and take down a false idol, Baba Shakti. Um, look, all in all, this film, again, is good. If you, if you were to watch the trailer, which obviously a lot of you would have to even know that this film exists... Because the marketing, they've not done a great deal of marketing for it. The marketing budget wouldn't be particularly huge. If you watch the trailer, you'd you'd kind of think it's it's the Indian version of John Wick, right? That's kind of I don't know. That, that's kind of the the vibe I got from it anyway, um, and that's what made me want to go watch it. I was like, you know what, this looks pretty decent. You know, I've I've long said, and I stand by it, is that diversity in films in the West is. Uh, homogenous it's boring right because you cast certain people for certain things all the time and then it becomes homogenous you know it's always the same and I've always said I would love stories from around the world and to get our diversity through programming rather than diversity through casting so when I saw this I was like you know what this looks pretty decent you know essentially all set in India there is very few white people in it Shalto Copley makes an appearance as Tiger a sort of ring I say ringleader. Yeah, I guess a ringleader. You know, he's sort of uh, announcing underground fighting. And he's sort of rigging it all to get them sweet, sweet rupees. Uh, but it is, it's an Indian film. And yeah, I, I watched that trailer and I was like, yeah, this will be great. Let's go watch it. So I did. I watched it last night. Uh, paid for it. And all the time I was watching this film thinking this could have been better with some very simple twists. On what they've already done and what I mean not twist but if they just reordered some bits and pieces in this film I think it would have hit a bit better so what happens is this the story is as simplistic as I've said it is and these films work best with very very simplistic stories right so it is about a young chap who is an underground fighter trying to get revenge on Baba Shakti and the chief of police right because he, they, they burnt down his village and killed his mother and obviously any his whole life was turned upside down. This is all in the trailer. This is not spoilers. So we're told this story, but we're told this story through sort of flashbacks here and there. And it lacks the emotional weight because you get a good first act with quite a lot of violence, actually. And also still some of these flashbacks. Not enough to fully understand what's going on, but enough to be like, oh yeah, I, I get the gist of it, but I don't know the full picture. But then come into the second act and it grinds to a halt. It, it actually just grinds completely to a bloody halt. And it's really slow. So all of this action culminates in Dev Patel essentially needing to be looked after. And he falls into the river. If you know anything about Indian rivers... My God, I'm surprised he hasn't died of sepsis or some other gangrenous nonsense because their rivers are disgusting. It's essentially an open sewer. Um, and I couldn't help but think about that whilst I was watching this film because there was also like, you could see stuff floating. And by stuff, I was thinking poop, obviously. Uh, and then it just grinds to a halt. So he's rescued by some people which were name dropped earlier in the film which is essentially a group of transgender people who are also kind of part of the story, but not. So Baba Shakti and some other individuals want to take their temple as well. And so they then, that's sort of, they, they, they revive him, look after him, heal him. And then it builds up to him going on a spiritual journey to then go back again to his past in a flashback sequence to, to fully come to terms with what his mission really is even though it implied earlier in the film that we know fully what his mission is 
So that was quite bizarre, and I feel like they probably did that to access some more funding, which is a part of filmmaking nowadays, and when you know that that is a part of filmmaking nowadays, when you include uh, elements of sort of minority cast like this, and it also feels out of place and bad with a pace, because it did, it unfortunately makes you think that they did it for budgetary reasons to get more budget. Um, but you could have included all of this, actually, if you had included it further at the start of the film. And so this is part of the issue, is that this whole pace and the structure of the film is kind of bad. Uh, we didn't need him to then find himself again. We didn't need him to have the need to go and have a flashback again. Because he's already done things which he wouldn't have done unless he had conviction behind his actions, right? And the whole film implies that he very clearly wants to go and do these things. We didn't need to grind the film to a halt to then have the same thing which was already implied. So it's quite odd. If they'd started the film with a brief flashback uh, and then a quick bit of action or or maybe even just a, maybe maybe just the whole flashback sequence of him being with these people, maybe this just at the start and then he gets healed and then and then he does all of the action that had preceded it. So he's, he's there for some unbeknownst reason we don't know. And then we see all the action. And then it's just a straight shot from second to third act of just action. That would have worked. And you understand how John Wick did it so perfectly, actually. Because they set the first act up to establish John Wick. And establish who he is, what he is. His wife dies and the dog dies. And then it's just straight up action for the rest of the movie. Right? It is just... It doesn't grind to a halt at all. There's very few sort of moments where you can take a pause. It's pretty much just straight action. And and that worked brilliantly because the first act justified everything that then comes before it. Whereas in Monkey Man, the first act doesn't fully justify all of his actions. Does that make sense? Hopefully we're on the same page of why this was a bit of an issue now. Um, and then obviously then he just goes off and does his own thing and sort of hooray, um, does what he wants to do. Uh, the action's relatively good in this film, actually. It's pretty good, but it is... It is very, very apparent when you know the issues surrounding this film and how it got made as the, the constraints of their filming. So, a lot of this was filmed on, like, GoPros and stuff like this as well. And uh, there was, like, water damage. There was issues with everything. And I feel like e either Dev Patel or the cinematographer, whoever in their sort of infancy... And I, I, I guess amateurish take on this film. Everything was a bit too close up. There's a great sequence which you would have seen because it's predominantly featured in the trailer in the kitchen. And that's the some of the best action in the entire film. And then the rest of it is very, very kind of close up, kind of janky, quite difficult to see. It's not that it's bad. It's just that the trailer sells it as something different. And then you watch the film, you're like, oh, it's not all this. It's not all this really well choreographed action you know um so the action's good the score was good in parts and then there's some which is really really bad and and it, again it adds to this sort of there's scenes where it's full-blown fighting but the score doesn't match what's happening on screen you know it's quite slow down and you because you've ground to a halt in the second act to then go to the third act you need breakneck pacing sound as well you need that to match it really 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 well and it sadly didn't so i feel like that was a shame and whoever did the scoring and the you know set up overall the soundtrack for this film yeah bad like actually you know quite bad you know it, it really did hinder the film i think in parts now i sound like i'm being really negative i still enjoyed this film and i would still recommend go and watch it like i still had a good time but this is the whole point of being a critic, is to unfortunately criticise some of the things which are bad. The action is really good, but it missells it, you know, because you see this stuff in the trailer and then it's missold for the overall parts of the film. I think the locations were great. I think there were certain sequences which are absolutely brilliant. There's a sequence where Dev Patel acquires the... Um, her name is just Queenie. She's Queen of Kapoor, uh, a hotel. Uh, and he acquires her purse... 
and there's this sequence where this purse is just constantly being handed to person to person to person and it's the gritty underworld of India and that was brilliant. There are fantastic sequences in this entire film and don't get me wrong the action that we do see that's close up although I would have preferred it to be panned out was still very good but I'm annoyed that I couldn't see it better. You know I, I couldn't get a better view of it all. So overall I really enjoyed this film. I think it's a good film. I just think with some very very basic tweaks it could have been much better like on par with a John Wick type film genuinely um, I will say this as well the lo like locations costumes everything great the color grading on this film was brilliant as well actually everything looked good um, the cinematography in terms of framing not all the time worked but most of the time was pretty damn decent uh, and the sound was really good you know i'm so sick of christopher nolan films where i can barely hear a word anyone's fucking saying and then i watch this and i'm like oh wow great i can hear everything clearly you know i'm not going deaf so the sound mixing was really really good but there you go that's my review everyone was fine dev patel was good the acting was good i'm not going to criticize any of the acting like it was all really really decent and i think dev patel um, given, given a little bit more money and better technical partners to work with will do great things moving forwards genuinely great things so if you've seen it let me know what you think down below cheers guys take care bye bye now